Okay, let's see. Maybe, just maybe, I can get this to work on my own this time. You know what? Let's just do it and see what happens. Greetings. Welcome back to Mediocre Minis. Sorry for delaying getting this video out. At the time of this recording, I recently got a new job. So that actually slowed things down a little bit as I was training, preparing for my new position. That's great. But now, we're back. And this time, we're going to be painting the first Avenger, Captain America. We're going to be going through a very similar process as we did before with Iron Man, except this time we actually have a face to paint as opposed to just a helmet. Now, a few notes about this miniature before we get started. First, is this miniature a Primaris captain? No. This miniature is actually a Primaris lieutenant, and that doesn't quite fit with Captain America. But see, here's the thing. I don't really care. Yeah, I was looking through the miniatures and the captain that came with the Indominus set. I have other plans for eventually. But for right now, I decided to go with this lieutenant because I thought that the miniature was a lot cooler and I just wanted to paint Captain America with this mini. Nothing more to it than that. And also, I do understand that Captain America normally does not use a gun. I don't really care either. It would have been a lot nicer to equip him with a chain sword or a power sword. However, the gun looked a lot better on the model when I was putting it together. And I'm not very good at conversions yet. So, with all that being said, let's turn things around. And let's get started. So for the base coat of Captain America, I'm using Blood Red, Dragon Blue, and Ghost White from Reaper Miniatures. One of the things I like about base coating is that you can be a little bit messy. For instance, here, if you get some blue on, say, the purity seals, on the sword sheath, even on the gun and parts of the shield, it's not that big of a deal because you'll be going back over those layers later with the colors that you want. Though sometimes it is nice to try to be neater, uh, this can have many benefits. First, it can teach you brush control and moving paint exactly where you want it and not where you don't want it, of course. I made a mistake here, I covered the shorter pad with blue and we're gonna find out really soon that I probably should have not done so as to make the red base coat a little bit easier. I generally try to leave areas that I want to use different colors on clean, but sometimes it's a little messy, and again, that's perfectly okay. Now here I am applying the red to the shoulder pad. It took a few extra coats because it was not opaque enough to cover the blue, and that's just a mistake that I made here. In the future, just thinking ahead a little bit more would have prevented this and made the process a little bit faster, but in the end, it's just paint. You can go right over top of it again. Ways to avoid situations like this is to come up with a plan beforehand. You can take a picture of your miniature and then block out colors in Photoshop, paint, or just mentally make notes of where you want to have specific colors at. One of the areas I generally forget is the backside of cloaks. Now, while you don't necessarily see them as much as the front, it is good to remember that if there's a cloak and you can reach it, it's a good opportunity to add a little bit of paint there so that if someone looks at your miniature from behind, they see it fully completed. Again, with the base coating step, Sometimes it'll take a few extra coats to get full opacity or for whatever you wish. And that's perfectly okay. If you need to put down two, maybe even three thin coats, that's perfectly fine. In many instances, two or three thin coats is much better than one thick coat. Now here I am adding the ghost white to many areas of Captain America. 
it's always useful to not use a pure white or a bright white because in contrast to all the other colors you put on the miniature the bright white will really really stand out so the ghost white is a little bit of an off white it has a bluish gray tint to it which fits in very well especially with the blue power armor but also it does not outrageously stand out as if it were a brighter white I did the white part last for the base coat because one, if I make a mistake, white is much easier to cover up with rather the blue or the red. And two, if I would have done the white first and I made a mistake, it would take a lot more white to go back over top of it. Many ways to base coat is go from the center and outwards. And by the center, I don't mean the center of the miniature, I mean areas that are more shallow such as the cloak and the power armor and then build outwards from there such as the trim is on the furthest away so then you can use that last or paint that last and now here I am just adding some brown leather to the holster And of course, our miniature has some brown pouches on his back, so we just add a little bit of brown paint there to make it stand out. And here we have the base coats, barring the shield, all completed. For the back of the shield, I use just a straight gun metal. I figured it would be nice enough that it can look good from the back of the miniature, but also at the same time uh, metallic, as in it is Captain America's shield after all. Now moving on to the shield, this is one of the more detailed areas of the miniature. I decided, in looking at Captain America's actual shield, trying to follow a similar scheme of how the rings line up with the white, the red, and of course some blue, so I decided to do that here with a red outline. This is another one of those areas where a little bit of forethought would have gone a long way because then I probably would have started base coating the entire shield in white. It might sound kind of odd because well, I can go over it with the blue and the red later on and then just touch up any of the white that I needed. Now yeah I know it's a little bit against what I said before, however it'd be a lot easier to touch up small little areas with white or blue or red than it is to do the process I did here. And then I made yet another mistake by moving on to blue trim work and not doing the white. As you can imagine, eventually this causes me to make a mess and I end up taking far more steps than I needed to. So just here now applying the white and then I go back and I touch up the blue and the red and then I'm gonna touch up the white again. Though I should mention there is nothing wrong with touch up work. The more brush control you have and the more you practice, it'll become a lot easier to get into all those little nooks and crannies and make fewer and fewer mistakes. Practice really is key, and the more you do it, the better you'll get. It's coming up when I realize that I probably should have done things a little bit differently in the order, and this is why having a paint plan is so important. What I would end up doing in the future is, again, base coating it white, so I have all the white areas covered, and then very carefully outlining the blue trim and the red trim. Much like I said before, from working from the center outward, I start at the lowest areas, or in this case, the white, and then going over it again, because white's a lot easier to cover up.
Now here I am adding a little bit of more red. This is around the halo, which is around the skull, which eventually the skull will be painted silver as the center of Captain America's shield, the star, is silver itself. Now here we have the completed shield, minus a few details, and of course the purity seals, which we will take care of later on. Though if you want to do the purity seals now, that's perfectly fine too. Now I'm going to do something called panel lining, and for that I am using black ink. I should note, you don't need to use ink. You can use just black paint if you wish. But I choose to use ink here for the main reason is it flows right off the brush very, very easily. I don't have to worry about dipping my brush back into towards my palette. However, ink does come with a few drawbacks. One, it is very strong, so that if you make a mistake, it takes a lot of effort to fully cover that up. However, it makes the line stand out very, very nicely. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, doing panel lining, and what panel lining really is, essentially it's tracing. It's going along individual panels, nooks and crannies, and drawing just simply a black line. And what this does, it helps show that there are actually individual pieces of armor there. It helps the edges stand out, it helps all the finding details stand out, and now you can really tell, looking at this, you can really tell that his boots are several different pieces put together. Before it was just all one flat blue, well, now there's some difference and some definition there. And as per usual, this is mediocre minis after all, so what would it be if there weren't some mistakes that you have to go back and cover up? Now, as before, we're going with a shade, and we're using the good old Nun Oil from Games Workshop. And here I cover the entire miniature. Partially a mistake. There are some areas, such as some of the whiter areas, I went a little bit too heavy on, which required a little bit more touch-up work and some finishing touches later. However, again, you can go over it, but a little bit more forethought would have definitely helped. I would have spared some areas of the shield also, making sure to get the skulls in the center. That is what I really wanted shade as I'm doing now, but some of the areas around that, I wish I would have done things a little bit differently and use a little bit less black wash. Part of it is trial and error, and you can see here he looks much, much darker than he did before. But luckily, again, it's just paint, you can go back and fix it. Now we're going to move on to some highlights. With the highlights, I'll be using mostly scale 75 colors, but also a few different shades of blue to really bring out the edges and definition of Captain America. Most of the time, you can reuse the same base color that you used before, in this case, Dragon Blue, and go over all the blue, and it would really show the shadows and what's called your midtone, or just the regular base color that you had before. And that can be really, really nice. However, you can also mix and get lighter shades of whatever color you choose, and that can also really help out, bring out some definition, and give your miniature some depth. Now, as I said before, with the white, sometimes it does actually take several coats to go back over it because white is sometimes a hard color to use, but that's okay. Now, moving on to edge highlighting, where it is what it sounds like it is. Going around some sharp edges and giving just a very, very thin line to really make the edges pop. Now, in real life, you don't necessarily see as much head edge highlighting. However, on miniatures, especially when you're looking at them at an arm's distance, a little bit of definition around the edges can really make it stand out. Very similar to how the panel lining made some of the shadows and armor stand out, this does the same thing, but just basically the other way around. You do not need to get every single edge in every nook and cranny. However, some edges are more important than others, such as corners on the shield, and then, of course, you have some of the 
larger surfaces of his shield would really actually benefit from a highlight. But again, you don't need to do every single edge, just wherever light would hit, or maybe where shadows fall, use a darker edge highlight. Now we're going to move on to some of the metallic bits. I'm using blade steel, gunmetal, and a little bit of pure black. I actually decided here that I was going to use a mixture of the blade steel and a little bit of silver to do some of the metallic bits on the front of Captain America. He doesn't seem to have much gold on him, so I figured silver is a much better option going back and touching up the skull. Sorry for the out of focus. I still don't really know what I'm doing here. And I also used the same silver on the halo, which required actually a bit more work than it looked like. A lots of nooks and crannies, lots of corners, and lots of areas where you needed to double check and triple check to make sure everything is covered. In this process, I also used the gun metal on the gun, and then added a little bit of red. Now we move on to freehanding the star. Since Captain America has a star on the front of his uniform, I decided to add this flat area as a star. And a way to do this, if you are not as an expert of a painter, and I certainly am not, is use a lighter shade of the base tone. So here I use a light blue to start off with draw a rough outline of a star and then I go over that with white and then simply fill it in. The reason for this is if you use white again it can take a little bit more to cover up. If you use a slightly lighter shade and here I am correcting my mistakes after I filled it in with white which you shouldn't do but if you use a lighter shade of blue it's much much easier to correct tried a few different methods of putting some dots, drawing some lines, and then eventually filling it in. But again, this is mediocre mini, so mediocre is good. And finally, we'll move on to the head. Use Bugman's Glow, Kislab Flesh, and Ishbati? Ishbattle? Eh, whatever. Another type of bone color. Now I've already primed and mounted the head onto a paperclip. If you're interested how I did that, check out my Iron Man video. For the flesh, I use Bugman's Glow, which is a, march, a much darker flesh tone. And the reason why I chose this, I can then take some of the lighter shades and add that on top, and it can automatically give me my, my shadows without really needing a wash. It's a really nice method to use lighter shades of anything, really, and then have underneath those lighter shades much darker tones and save the wash step. I'm also using a shade of brown here for the beard and hair. Captain America, at least in this figure, is more of the Infinity War style and less of the rest of the MCU. Plus I figured the head and the beard work very well for Captain. After I have the head base coated, I go with a lighter shade of brown to bring out some highlights for the beard. Now on to the eyes. Oh, the eyes. Eyes can be very, very difficult. That's why I'm doing it now before the rest of the face. And believe me, it took probably 45 minutes to get these eyes looking decent. Uh, they're very small. It's very tricky. All I can say is take your time, get the shot in frame, obviously, and don't be afraid to paint over top of it and start over. <clears throat> I started with black to give some shadows to the eye sockets, and then after I had the black, I put a very small amount of white 
on the inside of the black, as you can see here, to still have a little bit of a shadow around where the eye would be. In a way, it's almost like you're drawing three circles. A black circle, a white circle in between, inside that, and then a tiny, tiny black dot in the center to symbolize the iris. Again, it's difficult, and it took a long time. And here we have the black and the white before we move on to the iris, which for me is by far the hardest part. Because the black, you can easily paint the flesh tone and cover up some of those mistakes. A little too much white, add a little bit of black. But the irises, now that's tricky. It took, again, close to 45 minutes just to get those two little eyes, but in the end, we got it. And somewhere, there was footage of me covering up some of the flesh tones to give Captain America's face a little more definition. It doesn't look incredible, however, it doesn't really need to be. You're not going to be staring this close at Captain America's head. Afterwards, once the paint's dry, pull off the head, glue it onto the miniature, add some basic materials, Captain America is done. And there we go. Captain America is now complete. But before we sign off, let's zoom in for some glamour shots. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this painting of Captain America in Warhammer 40,000. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment below. I'd like to hear about what you think. Also, if you're so inclined, give the video a like, maybe subscribe, and it does actually go a long way to help a channel like this out. With that being said, there is one more miniature to go for the original three Avengers from the MCU, and we're going with the God of Thunder, Thor. So, until next time, this has been Mediocre Minis, and I shall return. Thank <laughs> you.